morning, everybody. This is Randy with Carchaeology, and today is going to be a really fun day in that I've got a good friend coming to help me work on the Westphalia camper. So we're going to tag team on this and see how much we can accomplish in a day, just two guys messing around out here in the yard. We're going to try to fire it up for the first time, see if we can get it to run and drive, work on some of the cosmetics, maybe pop some dents out. Who knows? We might get somewhere, we might get nowhere, but I have a feeling that he and I working together, we're going to make a major progress on this machine. Can we turn it from a driveway derelict into a driving, ready-to-roll camper bus? Follow along and find out. Now, I was starting to clean things out here, and I came across this roll of film that was up here on top of the closet. Uh, I'm going to have to find a place that will develop this, and then I'll share the photos with you. I always love stuff like this, probably uh, some photos from a trip in its past, uh, but definitely worth investigating. And on the uh, Maria Sabina poster that I found here in the bus, uh, somebody saw it in the last video and uh, talked me out of it. Now, they gave me 80 bucks for this little scrap of paper, and that's going to go a long way in buying parts that we need to make this thing run. So the interior of the bus is a little scruffy. Fortunately, it's not full of rat crap or crazy shrapnel like a lot of the vehicles that I find myself in front of. Um, but it is definitely going to respond well to some cleanup. We'll get some uh, some armor all or uh, some good treatment on the plastics and stuff in here. Vacuum it out, clean it up, and see how much nicer it'll look. Maybe get these panels put back into place. Um, try to straighten all of that up there. Get the wiring tucked up underneath the dash again. And I think a little effort in here will go a very long way. Looks like Sebastian is here. The man with the plan. <laughs> awesome. So I don't know why it was parked, but there's a receipt for the engine being rebuilt in 1999. And the tag on the car is from 1999. So it's supposedly a fresh motor, but I mean, the oil seems clean, it turns and all of that. So, I imagine it will go again. Does it smell like gas? Oh, actually, no, it's perfect. No, no, it doesn't smell. Hmm. So, is it empty? Yeah. Oh, that's killer then. That will help. All right, so we got a new battery in there. Oh, all right. Nothing? No spark. Oh, everything was clean, but the points were not opening at all. Oh, well, that would do it. All right. Let's give it another shot. Oh. <laughs> No, there it goes. No spark. Already looking much better in here. Give that a good scrub and a hose out. There is a hole here, so I'll have to do something about that. But if that's the worst of the rust on the floors of this thing, it's pretty incredible. Oh, that's quite satisfying. Pull 
that out of there. Clean real good down in the corners here. Looks like we got some old foam in there that'll certainly blow up. Awesome. Now, after cleaning it, you get some of that goo in there that'll really soak in. give it a shine. It's so satisfying to see that transformation from old and crusty to nice and clean. All it takes is a little bit of effort. And when you're detailing stuff, I, the common thing is to really go after the big surfaces and make all of that look good. But the more time you spend on little stuff, the better it really looks in the end. So taking the time to pull this vent out really clean it and treat it inside and out is going to make a massive difference in the overall look of everything when it's together. I know that looks amazing, but if I left it all crusty and nasty in there, the eye would be drawn to that dirt and it would take away the whole effect of looking as new as it can look. I'm actually using a spray tire foam on this piece here because it it has some pretty serious texture to it uh, and this will let it soak in a little bit and then when we wipe it away you'll see just how clean it can look and not so much as wiping away as making sure it's getting into all the little nooks and crannies it's really making that rubber piece look like new and once it dries, we'll really see what it looks like. Of course, everything looks good and wet. But this stuff should work fairly well in giving it a consistent shine and making it look clean. Awesome. That's a start. Awesome. <laughs> Fortunately, it seemed like the tank was empty, so we're not dealing with a bunch of bad fuel. But let's dump some fresh stuff in there. We replaced the fuel lines underneath. So we hopefully don't light this thing on fire or have any crazy leaks. And then I think we will be good to go. Some gas in there. Are you ready? No, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. All right, I'm waiting. 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 Here we go. Ah, that starter is so sticky. There we go. Sounds really good. So the accelerator pump is sticking, so we gotta open that up and figure out what's up with that. But, but hell yeah. Maestro has uh, tuned the symphony here quite well. <laughs> this door's got a big wine dent in it. I don't know how the heck that happened, but it obviously started up here and then worked its way into the door. And this pushed way in. So I'm gonna pop the door panel off and see if I can push that dent out. I'm going to take all the handles and everything off here so we can get that panel all the way off. 
popping these clips out wherever they are. Ah, some of them are more stuck than others. Like that one. There we go. Factory plastic in here, sealing everything. I want to try to keep that as much as possible. All right, so now that I've got that door panel off and the plastic pulled back, you can see where it's tweaked in from the inside. And it'll be fun to push from the inside and see what the outside does. Coming back, no? It's coming back, but we need to go forward. Definitely, ne definitely need something up here towards the front. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Remove this panel here so I can try to get into the back side of the headlight and the front end and push that down out. Right, so I'm going to get a little creative here to try to pop that headlight bucket back out into place. This little bottle jack was found uh, underneath the one seat, and I've got a couple blocks of wood, and I'm going to block this baby up in between the seat stand and the headlight and give it a little crank and see if we can pop that out. There it goes. Let's see how that did out here. <laughs> oh, freaking awesome. Check this out. There's still a little bit of a dent right here, but that, that helped a ton. to brace it off of. All right. And let's see if we move carefully. Oh. There you go. There you go, awesome. All right, so I came in here and tapped this down just a little bit. This is definitely pointing in the right direction now. I think I'm just going to leave it. I don't want to work it too hard and end up having, you know, big issues here. As it is, I've got a little spot here to touch up. But, um, but man, huge improvement because that was really poked in. So we've realized now that the brakes are completely rock hard. I'm pushing as hard as I can and nothing's happening. So that's something we're definitely going to have to figure out. It would be nice to stop. It's just with a wipe to get all the dirt and muck out of there. And then I'll go back with uh, something to gloss it up. So the brake pedal was totally locked up. Um, now we've got it free and uh, we replaced the front hoses uh, with some that I had on the shelf, which was awesome. Um, it looks like we are still leaking some fluid um, at the uh, master cylinder down underneath. Um, but so there's more to do. But anyway, we'll we'll take care of that. But I think we can safely go on a little short test drive and uh, see if this thing moves under its own power. All right, let's give this baby a shot. Still more cleanup to do, of course, but uh, it's running. Or it will be. Let's see. Yeah, lights on. Come on. There we go. Sounds pretty darn good. All right. to the end of the driveway which really is kind of downhill <laughs> anyway and she stalled out it looks like it's a fuel delivery problem probably the fuel pump is bad so uh seb is digging through the parts stash see if we can find another pump get that on there and uh we'll give it another try all right we are moving under our own power or under its own power it's actually a little bit of brake action Sort of. The 
a battery. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Okay, so I asked my wife, she was in town to pick up a football and a pump and she knows I'm not a sports guy, so she totally thought I lost it and she's probably right. But uh, I'm gonna try to pop this dent out or the rest of it out with this football inside the door. So. Moving. Yep. Did you hear it? Yeah. Did you see it? Oh, I, I could see it moving and like, it popped just there. Yep. Stop. 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 Ah. <laughs> oh, awesome, dude. Perfect. <laughs> not perfect. So obviously, not perfect, but it's not caved in anymore. And up here in the front, that worked phenomenal to get that off. So anyway, it's out quite a bit. Uh, and I do think if I get one of the paintless dent removal guys out here, he could probably work out the rest of it with all the right tools. I just wanted to give it a shot and do the old football trick. I did that once with a rental car in Pennsylvania. We came out, there was a big dent in there and I didn't pay for the insurance. So I was freaked out thinking they were gonna uh, ding me hard for a big dent in the door. So I went and bought a football and shoved it in there, inflated it, popped the dent out. The problem was I couldn't get the football back out. Uh, and when I deflated it, the dent came back in. So I just pumped it up until it looked good and then left the football in there. Uh, so somewhere there's a rental car in Pennsylvania with a football on the door.